this is so strange. I never do two of these in a day. But as I was in church, um, I don't call it watching church. I call it in church. Um, the, the Lord was talking to me about the power of partnership. Um, because the church I was watching was having the anniversary today, and they were talking about their outreach and how they do outreach is so phenomenal. And they don't set up their own things. They partner with different organizations to do different things. And as I was watching uh, their role, and um, the Lord spoke to me about the power of partnership. And he says, in this pandemic, and all of the racial unrest going on in the states and the presidential elections, it's so easy to isolate. And we we are supposed to physically um, distance, social distance, and not touch each other and not um, do all that physically. But what we can't do physically, what is shut down physically, we are supposed to um, power up emotionally. Like, because we can't gather physically as much and, and as, as frequently, depending on where you are in the world, um, we have to step that up emotionally. And the Lord is saying there's more power in partnership then there isn't one. And the Lord is really calling in this season of isolation to not um, spiritually isolate, not emotionally isolate, though we have to physically isolate. He's calling us to partner with each other. Um, it it uh, reminds me of that um, scripture that says, um, a threefold cord is not easily broken. Um, he's, he said, um, it says one, one person cannot keep, um, warm, but with two, you can keep warm or something like that. We need each other, especially in this season. And he's saying, do not push people away in this season. We need each other. We need partnership. Because for too long, we have been isolated. We have been alone. And he said, alone was for a season. But now it's time for you to... Um, to join with others, to understand that you are not an island, you are not designed to be by yourself. And sometimes it may be easier um, to say you're fine and be by yourself, but it's not, it's actually more difficult. Um, the funny thing is, you know, sometimes with um, sh um, stores or shops, you can have a shop that does the same thing. Like my, a pastor gave this analogy. He said, you could have a patty shop, um, three patty shops, close to one another, they sell the same thing and do the same thing, but they refuse to come together. But if they come together, they can do more for less. And the Lord's calling the church and individuals right now in this season to pull our resources together because we are stronger together than we ever can be alone. Enough with the, I'm alone, I can do me, I'm fine all by myself. You're not fine all by yourself. 
You're not fine raising those kids by, by yourself. You're dying. You need help. Asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. Because when you join your weakness with somebody else's strength, you are stronger together. There are people around you. If you just take one little step and reach out, there are people around you that are just waiting to help you. There are people that you don't even know that are just waiting to help you. People that have the resources um, for what you need, but they don't know you need it because you won't reach out. You're like, I could just do me. I can just do this on my own. But yes, you can, but you weren't meant to be on your own. You were meant to join with others. You, you'll, um, you're like, God will help you. Uh, yes, he will. But he, not all the time, but often uses people. And sometimes you push away the people he sent to help you because you're too afraid to get in relationship. This is a season of relationship. God ordained relationships. I'm not talking about the relationships that drag you down and um, that really are horrible. I'm talking about the God-ordained relationships, the relationships that he has ordained for you. And there are people in, in your life now that he has ordained for you, and he's saying, stop pushing them away. If you don't feel you have anyone, he's saying, there are those of you that are really isolated. Those of you with physical disabilities, those of you who are seniors, those of you who can't get out. Um, he's saying right now that, that don't worry, help is on the way. He's saying right now, don't worry, don't fret, Help is on the way. He sees your toil. He he heard he's heard your cry. He's seen your prayers. He's seen you get down and dirty and fasting. He's seen you re uh, be rejected. He's seen you uh, preach to empty buildings. He's seen all the labor. He's seen all the tears, and he is sending help. Don't give up. Don't give in, because the moment you give up, that's the moment of breakthrough. That's the moment of breakthrough, and he is breaking through right now. Breaking through barriers, breaking through esteem issues, breaking through curses. Hold on, hold on, he is breaking through right now. Hallelujah, today is the day of breakthrough. Today is the day of overwhelming blessing today is a day of overwhelming just faith for you you don't only to have faith in god i have to have faith in god but he wants to tell me he wants me to tell you today that beloved dear one um Blessed one and precious one, the Lord has faith in you. 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 He's He's put too much in you for you to faint now. He's put too much in you for you to give up now. He's put too much in you for you to drop out now. Because the moment you drop out is the moment you you say that what he's putting you is not enough. And I'm here to tell you, you are enough. You are beyond enough. And what God has put in you from the foundation of the earth, he will use. All your struggle, all your toil, 
everything is not for nothing. It is for something, beloved. It is for something. There is life after divorce. There is life after abuse. There is life after financial ruin. There is life after cancer. There is life after diabetes or living with diabetes. There is life after COVID. There is life in COVID. Where, where the devil, where the devil is, is breeding death, God is sprinkling life. God is sending a, a download of life. And when I say there is life in COVID, let me explain that. I'm not saying that COVID isn't killing people and COVID isn't awful. But what the fruits of COVID are bringing are totally um, something that God is using. COVID, I've never seen churches come together. I've never seen um, uh, uh, organizations give or whatever, like as much as I do for COVID. As horrible as COVID is, and was it brought stuff out of us good stuff and bad stuff that that we didn't even know and the bad stuff we have to work on and go through process to change but the good stuff is so phenomenal the people that come that have come together the stories of people um cooking food for each other, the, the stories of God uh, building relationships that help each other. That's one of the good things that COVID has done. And that's what I mean about uh, COVID bringing life to people. That's what I mean. Because in the deluge of death, there are seeds of life. Where there is death, there are seeds of life. So the devil might be speaking death to you, but God says right now that there is life. That there is, there is life after this. There is life after divorce. There is life after that broken relationship. There is life after abuse. There is life after race, after rape. He said, there is life. There is life where, where the evil one has planted death. There is life. He, he said to speak life. This morning I came on uh, and talked about the best sermon you've never heard. And I was talking about uh, the four things that your life can preach. Uh, your life can preach life. Your life can preach... You, you, no, your life preaches by your life. Your life preaches by your actions, your life preaches by your stripe, and your life preaches by your love. And um, he's using that to preach through you because you are significant. The reason he chose you to raise those kids is because you are significant. He has a purpose for you. He has a destiny for you. He's just waiting for you to realize who you are. All of this was to show Canada and show the world who we really are as a people. Um, this morning I mentioned there is nothing that shows you who you are like trouble. There is nothing who shows, and I also said, Trouble is not to show God who you are. It's to show you who you are and you who God is. So, God in this moment, in this season, is showing you 
who you are and is showing you what you've got in you and who he is to you. And he wants me to say, there is life after this. There is life after this. This is not the end of your life. It's only the beginning. And all these troubles and all these trials, they're just seeds for what God is going to do. Each lonely night, each tear, God is going to use to build things that you could never have dreamed. Through your children, through your, through your neighborhood, through your community, God is building something. God is building His church. Um, this morning, I was I was watching church, and they were um, they. It was a partnership with. Uh, it was Elevation Church's anniversary, and it was. Uh, um, they were. Um, partnering with um, Maverick City and uh, Pastor Furtick announced this morning that in the spring Elevation Church and Maverick City are coming up with a whole project together and I'm so excited about that but the song that they sang this morning was called Build Your Church um, and it was just so, it grabbed me it was like um, build your church, build your church, build it from the bottom, build your church. And as they were singing these words, I was thinking, we often think of church as a building, but the church is the people. So when, when God says, on this rock, I will build my church, he means the rock means Jesus, which we all all know. But when he says build your church upon this rock, he means build you. Yes, you. He doesn't mean to build a building. He didn't mean uh, build a building on Jesus Christ. Build, uh, build a sanctuary on Jesus Christ. He means build a person, and as God builds people, that way he builds the church. That is how we build the church, is we build people. We bring people to the Word of God so that they can be built up. They, they could have the tools to go through their lives. So as the Lord is building people, he's building your church. So, actually, build your church means to build me. When they were thinking, build, build your church, I was thinking, build me, because the church is not building, it, not, not a building, it's just brick and mortar. But building God's church means he's building people. So, the organism of the church needs to put structures in place to build people and not buildings. We've spent years building pretty buildings and pretty little um, uh, 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 service structures and, and little, little things. He's like, it's time to build the people, not the... Um, not the service structure, or not um, not the stuff around it, but build the people. He's saying build my church, meaning building people, not buildings or um, service structures, or liturgies, or anything like that anything external. He's like, build the people internally, and what you need externally, I will provide. And not only for churches, but individual people. So, build your family up. 
build your children up, build your marriage up. There are tools all over to build certain things up. So build your communities up. And that's not, that's not a lofty idea. You just have to be available to give a meal to a person, give a smile to a person, do whatever you can do. And he's saying, that is building my church. He's saying, when you build my people, that is how you build my church. That is what the Lord is saying right now. Thank you guys so much. It is so re rare that I come on twice, but the Lord really wanted me to preach this second sermon, and I'm so glad uh, that he used me. I'm so honored. And this, and this past year, speaking of anniversaries, uh, 2021 will be my 10-year anniversary uh, preaching on YouTube. So I've been preaching on YouTube for 10 years. I've been putting up uh, inspirational content and godly content on YouTube uh, for 10 years. So my web ministry has been 10 years in May. So in May, my web ministry will be 10 years. And I'm so grateful to how God has moved in my life with all the... It hasn't been easy. It's been a struggle. But God has been faithful. And God is always a God of His Word. And I thank Him for just being with me uh, through this web ministry for 10 years. Although I started on YouTube and, and then I moved to Facebook. Um, and then there was a time that I did YouTube and Facebook, but then that got a little too much, so I just stuck to Facebook because that is where most of my audience is, but I still do uh, Storytime Sunday on YouTube. And so my web ministry in total, Facebook has been about two years, but my YouTube ministry, uh, my web ministry started... Uh, 10 years ago, and I thank the Lord for, for that. It will be 10 years in in May. Uh, so, I thank you for all your support. I thank my family, thank my friends, thank people I haven't seen in years for commenting and watching. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to you. And I pray God's best for you. And I speak over extreme abundance in your life, extreme abundance of wealth, of knowledge, of understanding, of peace, of wisdom, of finances, and every good thing, every good and perfect gift that comes down from above, I wish for you today. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Build your church, build your church, build it from the bottom, build your church, build Thank you, Lord, for building us day by day. Thank you, Lord, for building us through the trials, through the mistakes, through the good times, Lord. Thank you for building us. Continue to give strategy to build your church. Give strategy to build your church. Give strategy, give strategy to pastors. Give understanding to pastors, oh God, to build your church. 
in the service of your people, God. I praise you for what you're building in this pandemic, in this time of racial unrest, and everything that's going on, Lord Jesus. I praise you that you're building your church. I praise you that you're setting the course for our lives, oh God, for your body globally, Lord God. Set the course, God. I thank you you're already doing so. And I believe that this will be a moment in history that will be so explosive, so overwhelming, that we won't even know what to do. Because out of the mess will become the message of your grace and your love and your wisdom, God. I praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen.